In 2014, a man by the name of Charlie White died the day after his 109th birthday. He was a family physician in Kansas City who had lived an extraordinary life. He treated mobsters gunned down in the streets of Al Capone, Chicago. He became one of the first doctors in America to be trained in anesthesiology, and he performed surgery on the president of Peru, returning with a smuggled pet monkey. Author and columnist David Vondrelli learned all of this when, in 2007, he became Charlie's neighbor when Charlie was a young 102 years old. David captures their relationship and bond that they formed during the final years of Charlie's life in his new book entitled The Book of Charlie, Wisdom from the Remarkable Life of a 109-Year-Old Man. And David joins us now. Great to have you. What a fascinating experience this must have been. Absolutely. And you, you, you say here that life was, somehow seemed to rest more lightly on him than most of us. Uh, explain that. Well, the first time I ever saw him, he was, uh, it was a Sunday morning and he was in his driveway, just a pair of shorts, uh, washing his girlfriend's car at age 102. So I could tell right away this was somebody who had a, uh, a lighter approach to life, uh, somebody <laughs> who figured out the, the secret of how to let go of the things that were outside of his control and to spend his time mm -hmm on the things that he could affect. Uh, and, you know, this is the essence of a ancient philosophy called Stoicism, and it works as well now as it did 2,000 years ago for Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, yeah you know, um, I, I love this line. I came to realize Charlie was not a survivor. He was a thriver. He did not just live, he lived joyfully. And, you know, we're, we're hearing more and more, reading more and more, um, medical studies that talk about stress and, and how uh, that shortens people's lives and the ability to be like Charlie, you say, letting life uh, be on him a bit lighter mm -hmm. and, and, and not being a survivor, being a thriver, that seems to make such a huge difference in, in Charlie's life and in others. Yeah, I think it really does. And, and the key is, this is a choice. We can decide. The world is always, uh, you know, one of the things I learned from Charlie is America's always been a divided country. It's always been a politically intense country. There have always been, you know, ups and downs in the economy. All the things that stress us now have been around uh, throughout our history. People make choices about what they're going to focus on. For You know, I hear you every morning worrying about the ups and downs, too many downs of the Red Sox. And, you know, we could focus on the fact that they're in the American League East. Uh, everybody's a winner there. We could focus on the beauty of walking into Fenway Park on a sun-splashed afternoon. There's nothing better in the world. So we choose, uh, choose our moods. We choose the way uh, we emphasize hope over fear. We emphasize joy over anger. Hey, David, it's uh, Jonathan Lemire. I certainly cannot take that nearly glass half full view of the Red Sox, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but give us, th this is certainly an extraordinary <laughs> life and the, and the real, it's just sheer you, you, breadth you, of it. That's because, you're, that's because you're not trying to cheer for the, the Royals this year. I guess, that, I guess that's true. Uh, so just give us one or two other little nuggets, either that, that some of the Charlie said to you or just as you observed him and watched him, did you realize, like, this is something that I could take that could help shape my own life for the better? Yeah, um, you know, I remember one time that uh, his his daughter, who was also a neighbor of ours, was uh, upset about something going on in the neighborhood. And after listening for a little while to her, you know, Charlie just looked at her and said, you've got to let that go. Uh, I, I don't let people like that bother me. Uh, it was a, an insight for me because I have a tendency, you know, being a journalist to get wrapped up in conflict to focus on bad news and and uh, another thing you know was uh, I'd go over from time to time burdened by the troubles of my kids and uh, 
Charlie would always focus me on the big picture, uh, the ways in which they were doing really well, and get me up out of the, uh, you know, the, 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 what can be you know, depressing or stressful uh, details. And uh, there was this wisdom. I, I, I figured out that, you know, we spend a lot of our lives figuring out that life is complicated, that the world uh, is, you know, uh, more uh, difficult uh, than it seems to us as little kids. But in Charlie, I noticed that if you live long enough, that process reverses and you start to simplify life and figure out what really matters. And uh, it's, the, you know, it, at the end of his life, he, he wrote down the things that he had learned in 109 years, uh, what was most important to him. And they were short little instructions for life, things like um, enjoy wonder, ob observe miracles, uh, you know, take time to listen to the rain or to look at a rainbow. It, it, these simple things that seem like almost greeting cards, it turns out they're <laughs> true. Uh, they're not trite, they're true. And you know, I love, I love you, what you're saying. It's a great reminder, uh, Charlie's lessons through you, a great reminder, don't catastrophize. Realize you can only do what you can do. And something that we say here that, because we've heard an awful lot, don't suffer twice. Yeah. Don't worry about what might happen. Wait till it happens and then approach mm -hmm. it. This, this is yeah. also though, you, you, you had said that you tried to write a children's book for your children and you never could do it. You felt like that was a failure. You say this book, this book may be your redemption. This may be the book you always want to write for your children. Yeah, you know, I'm just struck by how much change my children are going to have to live through as they go yeah. through what will probably be their long lives in the 21st century. Uh, but in Charlie, I see somebody who observed and survived and thrived through tremendous change. He was born in the days of horses and buggies and lived to see rovers on Mars. He was born before radio, before TV, and lived to have an iPhone in his hand. Uh, this is tremendous change. He had to reinvent his career halfway through, go from being a general practitioner, doctor making house calls, to being uh, one of Kansas City's first anesthesiologists. He, he had his world drop away multiple times. He lost his father when he was young. He lost a wife uh, when he was young. So... I hope that my kids can see that change can be your friend. Change can be a door that's opening into uh, something even better and doesn't have to be something that we fear. The Book of Charlie, Wisdom from the Remarkable Life of a 109-Year-Old Man, is available now. David Vondrelli, thank you for writing this book and telling the story, and thank you for coming on this morning. We appreciate it. Congratulations on the book. And still ahead, the man accused of killing four college students in Idaho is one step closer to standing trial. We'll have an update on that case, including an odd moment in court yesterday. We'll be right back. Social justice, fairness, democracy, it's all in my bones. I remember my father running for office in Canada when I was 11. He lost in a landslide, but he explained to me that he never expected to win. It was simply the fact that someone who looked like him could run. That's the spirit of democracy I learned from my family. People getting out there and having their voices heard. And I carry that lesson with me every day. You can see the level of wreckage residents are grappling with in the wake of this brutal storm. Russia has launched another round of deadly attacks against Ukraine. Two major developments on the national security front. In Iran, widespread unrest. Children's hospitals all across the country are being pushed to max capacity. Some new data on the economy outlines the effects of inflation for Americans across the country. Thousands of people out here protesting. 
My podcast, The Revolution with Steve Kornacki, explores the rise of Newt Gingrich, and now he's agreed to talk to me. I do want to commend you and your team, I think, whose remarkably useful contribution to history. He offers a unique perspective on our divided politics. The gap between the left and the right is as big as it's been at any time in modern America. These are real fights about things where people legitimately disagree. Join me, Steve Kornacki, as I sit down with Newt Gingrich for a special bonus episode of The Revolution, available now. There comes a point when seeking justice for families means bucking the system. When the truths you accept lead to very...